All right, back on track. <coughs> the Canadian Criminal Code also recognizes internationally protected persons, like a head of a state, head of government, even a member of family of them. So in the Canadian Criminal Code, mental disorder means a disease in the mind. In the Canadian Criminal Code, military shall be construed as relating to all or any of the Canadian forces, which are Her Majesty's forces. United Nations is mentioned in the Criminal Code. That really doesn't show equal protection of the law. This is really interesting. In the Canadian Criminal Code, Section 5, nothing in this Act affects any law relating to the government of the Canadian Forces. That means that the Canadian Forces are not subject to the Canadian Criminal Code. That means they can do whatever they want. Common law principles are continued, so therefore we can do what we need to do to stop the junk. Ignorance of the law by a person who commits an offense is not an excuse, that's section 19. Parties to an offense, section 21, everyone is party to an offense who actually commits it or does or omits to do anything for the purpose of aiding any person to commit it. And so by the police not answering to our um, calls for help. In some way, they've omitted to do something and they've aided the commission of the crime. I'm going to be skipping some stuff here because I have way too much that I can point out. Everyone is in the criminal code. Everyone who is required or authorized by law to do anything in the admission, administration or enforcement of the law as a private person is, if he acts on reasonable grounds, justified in doing what he is required or authorized to do and in using as much force as necessary for that purpose. That would mean if you see a crime or a crime is about to be committed, as a private person, you can act on reasonable grounds and justify what you're doing and use as much force as necessary for that purpose. Everyone is justified in using as much force as reasonably necessary to prevent the commission of an offense. And the offense I'm going to suggest here is prevent the crime against humanity from happening. Every person on an aircraft in flight is justified in using as much force as necessary to prevent the commission of an offense. If it were committed, it would likely be to cause immediate and serious injury to the aircraft or to any person or property. So, theoretically, if you're on a spraying plane, you're justified in using as much force as reasonably necessary to prevent the commissioning of the offense. You're protected in the Canadian Criminal Code. Everyone who witnesses a breach of peace is justified in interfering to prevent the continuance or renewal thereof and may detain any person who commits or is about to join in or to renew the breach of peace for the purpose of giving him into the custody of a peace officer. I would say my peace has been breached ever since I saw the lines in the sky. I'm not sure about their breach of peace. Every peace officer who witnesses a breach of peace of them and everyone who lawfully assists a peace officer is justifying and arresting any person whom he finds committing the breach of peace or who on reasonable grounds he believes is about to join in or renew the breach of peace. Well, a crime against humanity would be a breach of peace. A person is not guilty of an offense if they believe on reasonable grounds that force is being used against them or another person or that a threat of force is being made against them or another person.
Go, this gets really interesting. This is about Her Majesty. High treason. Listen carefully. Section 46 of the Canadian Criminal Code, High Treason. Everyone commits high treason who in Canada, A, kills or attempts to kill Her Majesty, or does any, does her any bodily harm tending to death or destruction, maims or wounds her, or imprisons or restrains her. So if you restrain Her Majesty, it's high treason. And that's 14 years in jail. Everyone who commits high treason is guilty of an indictable offense and shall be sentenced, no, sorry, imprisonment for, for life. So if we want to talk about equal protection of the law, if Her Majesty is restrained and that person goes to jail for life, then we should have that same protection if there is equal protection of the law. Obviously, it's not meant to be that way. But it's written in the code here. Prohibited acts. Section 49 of the Canadian Criminal Code. Everyone who willfully, in the presence of Her Majesty, does an act with intent to alarm Her Majesty or to break the public peace. 14 years in jail. Sedition. Seditious words are words that express a seditious intention. That's like being foul mouthed. And that would be, well, I'll just keep reading. No person shall be deemed to have a seditious intention by reason only that he intends in good faith to show that Her Majesty has been misled or mistaken in her measures to point out errors and defects, etc., etc. So if you were to speak bad about the Queen, you have a way out because you're trying to improve. But if not, it's 14 years in jail. Everyone who willfully interferes, impairs, or influences the loyalty or discipline of a member of the force, meaning the Canadian forces, is um, it's a crime for that. And I'm going to suggest that the loyalty of those that work in the military have been impaired and influenced because they're not protecting us. They have planes that can go 18 inches close to an aircraft. So I would suggest that the loyalty of the military force has been impaired, interfered with, and influenced. Government is a definition of Canadian Criminal Code. Government means Her Majesty in right of Canada or province. Okay, so Government of Canada means Her Majesty. Every official who in connection with the duties of his office commits fraud or a breach of trust is guilty of an indictable offense. Well, when you read the Constitution Act as protection of the person, everyone is pretty much... Um, committed some form of fraud through breach of trust. Everyone who resists or willfully obstructs a public officer or peace officer in the execution of his duty or any person lawfully acting in the aid of such an officer. I would suggest that police officers have been willfully obstructed to do their job. Everyone who willfully attempts in any manner to obstruct, pervert, or defeat the course of justice in the judicial proceeding is obstruction of justice. Section 180 of the Canadian Criminal Code, common nuisance. Everyone who commits a common nuisance and thereby endangers the life, safety, or health of the public is guilty of an indictable offense and is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. For the purposes of this section, everyone commits a common nuisance who does an unlawful act or fails to discharge a legal duty and thereby endangers the lives, safety, health, property, or comfort of the public, obstructs the public in the exercise or enjoyment of any right that is common to all the subjects 
of Her Majesty in Canada. I've been obstructed from enjoying my rights to have equal protection of the law. So have everyone else. Section 219 of the Canadian Criminal Code. Everyone is criminally negligent who A, in doing anything, or B, in omitting to do anything that it is duty to do, shows wanton and reckless disregard for the lives or safety of other persons. Now I'm just reminded of the video that Amanda had when she was speaking to the police officer. I would say that was a reckless disregard for what Amanda was saying. And so for the purposes of this section, duty means a duty imposed by law. And as we can see, the law guarantees the protection of the person. Some people talk about consent. No consent is obtained through the exercise of authority. I really like this section. This section 337 of the Canadian Criminal Code. Public servant refusing to deliver property. So think of a policeman. Everyone who being or having been employed in the services of Her Majesty and Right of Canada or a province, or in the service of a municipality, and entrusted by virtue of that employment with the receipt, custody, management, or control of anything, refuses or fails to deliver to a person who is authorized to demand it, and does demand it, is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years. Is that understandable? You can put a, a policeman in jail for 14 years. Section 337, Canadian Criminal Code. He has to give to those who are authorized to demand it and does demand it. And if not, it's an indictable offense, 14 years in jail. Mr. Policeman, everyone who for a fraudulent purpose takes, obtains, removes, or conceals anything is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years. Fraud, everyone who by deceit, falsehood, or other fraudulent means, whether or not it is false pretense within the meaning of this act, defrauds the public or any person or any, uh, or any service. I've been defrauded from the service of police services. Everyone is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not more than five years or is guilty of an offense punishable on summary conviction who wrongfully or without lawful authority for the purpose of compelling another person to abstain from doing anything that he or she has as lawful right to do, or to do anything that he or she has a lawful right to abstain from, abstain from doing. Lower, the lower level police officers are intimidated, and therefore we get intimidated. And so that is section 423 of the Canadian Criminal Code, intimidation. So I'm going to suggest that the police officers on the ground are being intimidated to not do their job. There's protection against internationally protected people, United Nations, etc. Section 467.11 of the Canadian Criminal Code. Every person who, for the purpose of enhancing the ability of a criminal organization to facilitate or commit an indictable offense under this or any other act of Parliament, knowingly by act or omission, participates 
in or contributes to any activity of the criminal organization is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years. So we're talking about omissions. Section 468 talks about crimes against humanity as an offense. Anyone may arrest without warrant a person whom he finds committing an indictable offense. And a crime against humanity is an indictable offense. A person who on reasonable grounds believes has committed a criminal offense. Anyone other than a peace officer who arrests a person without a warrant shall forthwith deliver the person to a peace officer. So anyone other than a peace officer who arrests a person without a warrant shall forthwith deliver the person to a peace officer. So if I arrest you, I have to bring you to a peace officer. A peace officer may arrest without a warrant. A person who has committed an indictable offense or who on reasonable ground he believes has committed or is about to commit an indictable offense. An information may be laid before a justice by or on behalf of any person who fears on reasonable grounds that another person will cause personal injury to him or her or to his or her spouse or common law partner or child or will damage his or her property. A justice who receives an information under this section shall cause the parties to appear before him or before a summary conviction court having jurisdiction of the same territorial division. So if you bring an information to a justice, the justice will have both of you together and then we'll create an order. Crimes Against Humanity and War Crimes Act. <clears throat> Section 3. This act is binding on Her Majesty and right of Canada or province. So, I don't want to hear anybody telling me that Her Majesty is a figurehead. Every person is guilty of an indictable offense who commits B, a crime against humanity. Every person who commits an offense, as I just mentioned, shall be sentenced to imprisonment for life if intentional killings form the basis of the offense and is liable to imprisonment for life in any other case. So a crime against humanity, regardless, is imprisonment for life. The definition of crimes against humanity means torture, extermination, enslavement, deportation, imprisonment, torture, sexual violence, persecution, or any other inhumane act or omission that is committed against any civilian population. That would be the spraying. So that was the criminal aspect. Now I'm going to talk about the Police Services Act. These are the rules that govern the police in Ontario. So I would like to reach out to the police because it's easy to want to bash them. But uh, police, we need you. We need you to do your job. And here's your job. Section 1 of the Police Services Act. Police services shall be provided throughout Ontario, and probably your jurisdiction has the same wording, in accordance with the following principles. One, the need to ensure the safety and security of all persons and property in Ontario. And better yet, the importance of safeguarding the fundamental rights guaranteed in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and the Human Rights Code. There you have it. The police have to protect what is written in the Constitution, and I have read what is written in the Constitution, and it is the security of the person. So, let's go a little deeper. 
I've underlined here, so some of this is a little bit scattered, but the importance of, of respect for victims of crime and understanding of their needs, the need for sensitivity to the pluralistic, multiracial and multicultural nature of Ontario society. And I would say that the pluralistic nature of Ontario would be true theirs as well. Part one, responsibility for the police services in this Police Services Act, it details Solicitor General. Well, the Solicitor General oversees the police. So now we have another person who's committing a criminal code offense. Municipalities. This is in the Police Services Act. Every municipality to which this section applies shall provide adequate and effective police services in accordance with its needs. And will and, and provide the following police services. Crime prevention, law enforcement, assistance to victims of crime, emergency response, etc., etc. And then we have the Ontario Police Ontario Provincial Police, which would 